You are listening to The Real Men Feel Show with Andy Grant. Real Men Feel encourages men to allow and express all of their emotions. Despite what you may have been taught, all emotions do serve you. Real Men Feel is committed to engaging in discussions that most men aren't having, but you don't need to be a man to join us. The Real Men Feel Show is produced weekly for your growth and enjoyment. Listen to us on podcast platforms including iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and many more. You can also watch the show on YouTube by visiting realmenfeel.org slash YouTube. Come back often and feel free to add the podcast to your favorite RSS feed or subscribe on iTunes by visiting realmenfeel.org slash iTunes. You can follow us on Twitter at realmenfeel.org and at facebook.com slash realmenfeelshow. All links mentioned in each episode are in the show notes found on the blog at realmenfeel.org. Real Men Feel is brought to you by The Good Men Project. Visit goodmenproject.com for more of the conversations no one else is having. Your reviews, comments, feedback, and participation are welcome during the live show and anytime in our Facebook group, on Twitter, or at realmenfeel.org. Now, let's get into this week's show. Hello, and welcome to another edition of Real Men Feel. This is your host, Andy Grant. And, you know, I've often heard the saying that the clothes make the man. And, of course, ZZ Top famously said, because every girl, every girl crazy about a sharp-dressed man. And, you know, my, my guest today knows all about that. He is an expert in the social and psychological benefits of being well-dressed. And so I'm really happy to welcome the, the founder of the Well-Dressed Academy, Mr. Ty Kuttner. Thank you, Andy, for having me. And uh, this is going to be a lot of fun. I guarantee that. Cool, cool. So where, where are you coming to us from today? Well, right now I'm in Prospect Park, which is located in Brooklyn, New York. So my son is off of school, so we're having some fun in the park. Awesome. <laughs> so I'm doing this interview. Well, good. Well, I'm glad it's good weather for you to be if you're, <laughs> if you're on For there. sure. <laughs> cool, cool. And I do like that lid. Well, you know, that's, that's one of my signature pieces. Yeah, awesome. So have you always been into, into fashion and being well-dressed? Uh, well, I mean, as a kid, I was always into looking fly and cool, you know, but, you know, as I, as I became older, I didn't, that, what I used to wear wasn't necessarily cool and stylish anymore. And so that's oh. when I had to make the switch. Okay. So styles changed, but you kind of stayed where you were comfortable. Yeah. Because you get m mature. So like when you're in, you know, high school, baggy jeans and, you know, if you're a rocker, if you're in your urban or hip hop, you know, you wear certain things, it's cool for your peers. But as you become an adult and a man, that stuff you know, falls out of fashion. Okay, gotcha. So you were kind of, as an adult, you were still dressing the way you did in high school and college? Exactly. Great. Exactly. And, and so, so what was your life like then? It was average. It was an average life, you know. Uh, everything was okay. You know, there was really no necessary reason to make any changes until there, a, can, a reason came. And then that's when I made the change. So, so what was that reason? What, what suddenly made everything being kind of okay, not okay enough? Well, uh, I was approaching 30. You know, I had my son. He was two, so I was a new father for the first time. Uh, I was working a job I really hated, but I was there for a while. And I just felt like things, you know, I needed to make some changes in my life, but I wasn't really making those changes. And then uh, I found out my girlfriend was cheating on me. Oh. So then I was like, man, you know, everything I had is now in the shitter. And, you know... I got to make a change. And I didn't really know what, what the change should be. When I looked in the mirror, I looked at myself and I said, the way I look is like a slacker. I look like I'm not really giving my best. You know, you know, my, my, my image is not the image I want to present in the world. And so I decided to dress like a man. And at the time I was watching, you know, the Godfather and I was looking at it at a, with a different perspective. And I said, you know, these, you know, the guys in these movies, they dress like men. They dress for business. That's how a man should dress. So I started wearing my professional clothes every day when I didn't need to. And I gave it a different context before I would wear them for interviews and things like that. But now I was wearing it as my everyday clothes and people started reacting different to me, differently to me. Women would look at me differently. I felt different. I looked in the mirror and I was a person who shouldn't be working. I was a bus driver. I was a person who shouldn't be a bus driver. Hmm. So I just stopped going to the job. I didn't even quit. I just stopped going because it felt uncomfortable to go there anymore. You know, it felt uncomfortable to play Xbox all night. It felt uncomfortable to slack off on other priorities. You know, and that's when I started to make changes in my life. Like, and things start happening instantly for me after that. Wow. So what did you notice first? How, how you felt or how people reacted to you? How I felt. 
because getting dressed in the morning, you know, getting dressed in the morning, it was like almost like a ritualistic type of thing. Like I felt like I was suiting up for for battle in the world. You know, I was putting, you know, you put your pants on, it has to have the crease. You put, you know, getting dressed dressed up, you know, but each button that you button, you know, is is almost something about it that's like putting on armor. You know, if you ever watch like a movie like from the uh, medieval, medieval times when they put their armor on and they each piece has to be put on properly. That's how it felt when I was getting dressed. And so when I went out, I just felt important. I stood up straighter, you know. So when people started to notice me, I knew what, what they was noticing. They was noticing me as a person who was important. And so from there, I was like, yeah, I want to feel like this all the time. Awesome. So so did you actually go for was there a period that you went to your bus driving job? in your suit looking looking sharp even that no i once i started making the change i started going on interview i was on vacation you're back so I, got, I, I was on vacation so i got i uh i took some time and i started making the change over that time i was on vacation and after that i was like i don't want i'm sorry i keep getting a call i um i didn't want to go back you know, I didn't want to go back from it. Just felt uncomfortable. I felt like there's so many more opportunities for me. Why would I spend time there? Right. So eight hours there was eight hours away from whatever else I was doing. Mm -hmm. You know, so I was like, why would I continue to go back there? So I just I, I couldn't I couldn't survive a whole day there. So I just didn't go back. Wow. So so uh, did did something stand out? Like what what was the first thing you noticed? Was the kind of ritualistic sense and and just like a confidence? What what was the first thing? The first thing was the, the idea that I was doing something new, that I was making a change, that today is going to be different from yesterday, right? So it was like, okay, just, to, just even, even before I got dressed, imagining what I was going to look like, imagining the style I was going to have, imagining the life I was going to have was the first change. And then actually doing it and then actually going outside and saying, well, I'm outside now. I can't turn back. Like, it's almost like you're jumping in a, in a, in a pool of cold water. You're in it now, you're in the water now, so you might as well swim, you know? So that's what it felt. So once I was out there and it wasn't, and I didn't die, I was like, okay, let's keep doing it. <laughs> cool. So it sounds like it, it kind of began with like visualization and, and then you really took action. And part of maybe some of this power was that you were making this conscious choice and taking some control over your life. Exactly, exactly. Taking control of my image, taking control over what I was projecting, right? Not just to the world, but to myself. You know, because the way I looked was important. The way I looked was kind of like the way I felt, especially going through that experience. I felt like I was going through hell. And I kind of looked, I didn't look, I didn't, I wasn't dressed horribly, like I wasn't dressed in rags, but I wasn't dressed like the man I wanted to be. I wasn't dressed like a person who can approach another entrepreneur or someone of importance, you know, and not look like I'm some guy off the street, you know? Mm. So that's what it, I started to feel that way. And when I felt that way, everything else just kind of fell into place from there. Mm. So, so you're dressing better. You're being conscious of your image and having your your exterior image kind of match what you wanted to be, how you felt inside. What what sort of changes manifested in your life from that? Well, the first thing that happened was the fact that I wasn't at the uh, the bus driver job anymore. Is I started going after other jobs, and with the first thing I did was I started to network more, right? Because I was I felt isolated because I wasn't in that profession. I I used to work in uh, luxury retail before that. But then when I tried to, I know I keep cutting out, but when, then I tried to get back in, it was around a recession time, you know, so it was, it was, it was tough for me to, to get back in. So when I started, I felt better. I, I was sharper. So I wanted more people to see me. So I started networking more, you know, and by networking more, it allowed me to get the man jobs, get opportunities, get interviews. And then once I got on the job, before I even interviewed, before I even actually sat down to the interview, I was already hired. That's what I found out after I got the job. I was already hired before I even sat down because of my image, the image I projected. All I had to do was not mess up with my words, and I was in, you know? <laughs> so so can, you, can you put into words the, the image that you're consciously putting out? Right. So I put, I put out an image of a man who is a man, who knows his direction in, in the world, who is a person of some type of importance, you know, classic, uh, some type of, you know, character. Uh, when people see me, when I, the way I walk, the way I speak, the way I introduce myself, I introduce myself as very assured of myself, you know, confident, these types of things. So when people meet me, they already have this uh, positive feeling about me. They already have a positive uh, impression of who I am. 
instead of a neutral impression, right? So when you first meet a person, it's neutral. It's neither positive or negative. And then from your first couple seconds, it goes either up or down. But I start positive. Therefore, I don't have to necessarily try to win you over. I'm already won over the second you see me. When you, usually when people meet me, they meet me with a big smile. They, you know, their eyes open up because I'm rare. It's rare to see sharp men, right? So when they see me, it's like, wow, who, who is this guy? I want to know. I'm happy he's talking to me at, at this point, you know? So that's, that's the kind of uh, image I give off. Cool. And, you know, the, the word that comes to my mind from all this is just success. Like you, you said, I, I've got this job even before the interview starts. Like you're just, you're in right. body and looking like success. Right. Exactly. I look like I came in with, I look like I came in a place that I already previously had some success. Right. Hmm. So, you know, social proof. Right. So if, if people assume that you're successful, they're going to continue to give you success. They're going to continue to, to say yes if you're, if you're used to getting yes for the most part, right? So I come in confident already. I come in with my head up, you know, uh, speaking confidently, and they already assume that I'm a successful person. So it's like, okay, here's, here's my request. Here's my desire. Sure is the answer I usually get with people, you know? And, that's, and, that, and from doing that over a matter of months and years and weeks, you just have this confidence that you just assume everything is going to go your way. And 90% of the time, everything does go your way. That's cool. So, so has this opened up entirely new career paths for you that you kind of weren't even involved with or considering previously? Right. So after I, I did the, I left the job, I started working in luxury retail for a little while, and then I ended up becoming a CEO of a nonprofit organization. So a friend of mine, he ran the organization, and we were friends for years. And I helped volunteer at the organization for, you know, years. Uh, but he didn't see me as COO quality before. He sees me as a volunteer, friend of his. But once I started just in sharp and I started teaching him what it means, not flashy, not fashion, but character, right? Being a man and all these things. He was like, you know, that image is an image I need to have in this organization so I can grow it, right? Because he's like, I've grown it as far as I can. I need more. So he, he made me the COO. He figured out how he did. He moved all the pieces to make me a COO, wasn't a, it wasn't a position that existed before that, right? So he moved all the pieces, I became COO, and now I'm getting media coverage, like almost instantly. Now I'm a local celebrity, right? Because I'm a person in this world that is never seen a type of person like this before. And then from there, I started teaching him how to dress sharp, right? He started making more money for the organization almost instantly. He started dating out of his league almost instantly. And that's when I realized, wow, it's not just me. Right. This, this dress and shop stuff is for other people. Other people can learn from it, too. And then that's when it was like, you know, Ty, you need to do this on a larger scale, because how else would this guy have learned how to be this way if it wasn't for your influence? Right. And where, what place would he go to? What book would he read? What website would he go? What store would he go to? To learn this. There's no store that exists. So then that's when I started to create what became the World Just Academy. That's really cool. So you, you chose this new direction for yourself got fabulous results and kind of you were like the guinea pig and then you realized wow th this works for other men as well exactly exactly beautiful so so t so tell me a bit about the well-dressed academy how, how what does that mean now and how, how did it start right so i started helping him i helped him he, he became sharper his friends were like wow you, you made a huge change on him how did you learn this stuff what do you do people was like you know i thought i dressed sharp you know grown men in their 30s who are you know affluent you know they, they've been to the military and they're like i thought i was sharp this is on another level, right? And I've been trying, but I didn't even know where to get started. So I started to put together what became the Wedges Academy. Um, you know, at first it was a blog and then it became uh, a Facebook group. And then I started to help guys like people I didn't know, right? So I started finding people on Facebook just to post about, you know, what happened to all the distinguished men? What happened to the Frank Sinatra's? What happened to the, you know, these types of Marlon Brando guys that we, that other guys wanted to be? There's, who replaced those guys? And I started having posts like that and people would gain interest and I would get guys on calls and I would, they would hire me to help them. And I started helping guys and they, and they life would transform, you know? And then that's when I started to say, Hey, listen, I put together a system of how to make a guy sharp. You know, I put together a step-by-step -step system, the same steps that I went through and people started to gravitate to it, you know? And that's, that's kind of what came to World Just Academy. The, the real purpose is to get a guy sharp in his appearance first, but then to bring out the real man, right? His body language. The way, how is he in relationships as a father, you know, and at his, in his work, you know, uh, in his career, because when you don't present yourself at the best, 
you don't perform the best. Mm. You know, it affects everything in your life. So that's when I started to create that. And that's, and that's what I do now. I help guys, they come to me and I teach them. A lot of times they don't even, they just ask me random questions about style. And I, because I've been asked so many times, I have the answers, you know? Cool. So it's, it's much more than, you know, telling people, you know, these colors go together or this plaid print looks good on you. It's, so, so like, right. so give me a bit, a bit about the, the process. Like what, what does the system entail? Are you, are you actually going shopping with people? Um, do you have to meet with, meet with your clients? How, how does it right. work? So originally I would meet with, with people, right? Originally it was my friends. So they would be in person. I would take them shopping. Uh, but then I realized, you know, it, we have to take a step back. We have to go back. Cause even that friend, when I first started uh, helping them be shocked, his behavior was out of control because he was so excited by the reaction he would get. And, you know, he would, he would be out of control. People would get to meet him, but then he was so obnoxious about it. You know, he was kind of, cause he, he didn't know what to do. He was like a kid in the candy store, you know? So I was like, okay, we have to go into behavioral things. We have to talk about behavior. So then I came up with like a, a well-dressed academy, like a, a well-dressed man code, because I assumed that just like in the military, right? If you're wearing your Marine uniform, you have, you're a Marine when you're in a civilian world. If you curse a person out, you make all the Marines look bad, right? Because when that person sees another Marine, he's going to think about you. Same thing with well-dressed men. If you're a well-dressed guy, you have to have a certain code because people assume that you're a friendly person. They assume that you can watch their dog for a second while they go in because they assume that you're a person of some type of character. So I came up with that. So the process is I started got out. It can be in person or it can be uh, virtually. Right. So I started got out and I find out what do you, who does he really want to be? What's holding him back? Why did he call me? What does he feel is missing in his life? Usually guys don't come to me and say, Hey, I don't know how to dress good. That's not why they come to me. They come to me and say, something is going on in my life. I feel inadequate in an area of my life, whether it's my career, whether it's my relationship, whether it's just getting old and I don't feel like I'm the mature guy I need to be. Cause remember how my story started. I was cheated on. It wasn't because I, I made a fashion faux pas, right? It was because I, I had some, some insecurity there and I had to build myself up. So that's what I do first. I build them up, find out where they are, and I start building them up. How do they look, how do they look now? When you need to go to something important, how do you look for that? And then I identify where the areas they can, they can uh, improve. And then from there, we start building. So once they get look sharp for the first time, they're all in. I get them looking sharp one time, and after that, how can I look like this every single day? And that's when we start going all in. And then we go from there to building an image. So I ask them a question, which is very important. Who do you want to be? Not who you were, not who you were yesterday, not who you became, not who you think you can be, but who do you really want to be? And I, and I let them sit with that question for a little while. And then I'll, and I'll come back and I'll say, okay, now, how does that person look? How does that person that you want to be, how do they look? Show me some images of people that you want to look, you know, James Bonds and stuff like that. They'll come up with, right? And they'll say, okay, this is very simple to create. And then we start to build that. We slowly start to build that from making lists of things they need to buy to actually going shopping and teaching them why it's hard for a man to look sharp. The stores don't help you no matter what store you go to, unless you're going to designer stores where the associates are paid commission. And tailors don't help you because everyone is used to making guys look average. So you're going to just look average if you have no other knowledge. You got to tell a person, I don't want it that way. I want it this way. You got to tell a tailor, I don't want it that way. I want it this way. You have to, you're in control of your own image. No one else. Right? So then we go from there. And then from there, they just become a part. They, they spend time with me and it, become, it starts changing their mind. They no longer see themselves the way they used to. They see this whole new world of possibilities of, the man that they can become or they're becoming and then they're all in you know and, and then from there we you know we go as far as we can go cool so it really sounds like you're and especially some of the names you're mentioning you're bringing back this this classical sense of of masculinity and right. and and pride and caring about what you're presenting and yeah that 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 confidence the success factor and um you know wanting to be kind of the center of it wanting people to look at you wanting to be noticed and, right. and able to kind of back it up right exactly exactly mm -hmm. i felt like you know like i said if you look at any of my before my before photos i was a person who wanted to be behind the scenes mm -hmm. i was a person that wanted someone else to be in front and my after photo is a person that is in front very comfortable being in front prefer to be in front because i'm a man right i want to lead i want to lead my family i want to lead my business my my company I want to lead the people who follow me. I lead men now in my groups. 
right? They follow my lead because I went through a situation and I came out of it. So now I can teach other guys how to come out of it. And that's the reason why it's like something, that's why I link back to those older guys. I felt like an older generation, we had manly men who were happy to be manly men. Where that was a, where that was something that was, people were trying to be it. They were inspiring to be those guys. Whereas now, guys are like, ah, come on, I'm fine this way. It's okay this way. I don't need to do that. I don't need to try to be big. I don't need to try to be in front or dress up. Like, if you're not in charge, someone else is. Mm. And I think that all men have a purpose. I think all men have skill and we have talents. Why not be in charge? Why not be the person who's giving those skills or, or telling those stories or being humorous? You know, why not be the front guy if you're capable? And I help them. Be, I, I make sure that everyone who comes into my Welch's Academy, they are capable. They don't, no one comes to me and say, hey, I just want to be fly. I want to be, no, you, you're not here. Here's a website for you. But if you really are a guy that has some purpose and you're just in a slump or you're just feeling inadequate in some way, then you're perfect for me because I'm going to shape you up and shine you up and then put you out there and allow you to fly. Cool. So it, it's, it's far beyond the clothing. Right. Yeah. Far beyond. So, yeah. So it really feels like uh, you're really doing some, some deep inner work and asking the powerful questions and, and coaching men up and then having them you know, dress to present that kind of exactly. new version of themselves. Cool. Right. Very interesting. Um, Cause you know, hearing the phrase, you know, the clothes make the man, but it, you know, it's, it's more, I guess that always, to me, it felt like that was like, just like a fake facade, mm -hmm. but, but it really, the clothes help the, the true man come out. Right. The good, the best clothes. Right. It's like a chicken and the egg type of thing. You know, the clothes make the man, the man made the clothes, which one happens first for me. It was the clothes first. The clothes first. The clothes made me visualize, wow, I can do better, right? So it was the outside. It was the outside visuals. But I knew inside somewhere, I had, once I became sharp, I had to match that because I would, I would feel fake. If I, if I was just still going to the job and I was still playing Xbox, I would feel fake. But I had to rise to the occasion and I rose to the occasion quickly because I was so motivated by the responses I was giving. I looked important, but I wasn't necessarily important when I first started. But I became very quickly because that's what I always wanted to be. I just didn't, I just needed that nudge to get me there. Cool. H has there been kind of one thing that stood out as the biggest surprise to you, the, a, a, a result you got from dressing sharp? Um, I guess the surprise would be the fact that I get favorable treatment from people, everyone, right? To the point where I walk into places, there's times when I get gotten into clubs without paying. This time when I got in females in the clubs, you know, I tell a story. I was hanging out with these females, about three of them, three or four of them. And we were going to this place and I was with them. Right. It was just I was the only guy and they were supposed to be on some guest list. Right. We get to the place. It was a roof exclusive rooftop place here in, in the city in New York. And the guest list closed at 12, 12 o'clock and it was like 1230. So the guy was like, it's only forty dollars each. Right. So I'm like, I'm not paying forty dollars to get in some club. I'm only going to be in there for an hour, you know, and I'm not paying for them. So they got off the line and then some guy came to me and said, hey, are those girls with you? And I was like, yes. He's like, come with me. So I motioned them along, got them in the club free, no problem. We get in the elevator. Later on that night, I seen the guy that got us in the club. And I said, hey, bro, thanks for getting me in the club. He was like, and he told me, he's like, when I seen you, I knew you were a guy who needed to be in this place. Huh. Right? So I was like, wow. That was like, it was an eye opener to me that everyone notices, right? And the way a person looks is very important. We want to be around people who make us look better. We want to be around people who we think are better because we want someone to rub off on us. Cool. So it's kind of like, uh, yeah, you're almost like the, uh, you are the genie or you're putting guys in new lamps via their clothes to get their wishes. And, uh, yeah. So, so what sort of transformations have some of your clients seen? Well, one of my best clients, um, he's a real estate, uh, agent and he was, you know, he's in his mid twenties, late twenties. And when he first signed up with me, he thought, yeah, I'm just going to help him dress better. You know, he's, he's a real estate agent, so he has to dress a certain way. And he didn't really know how to. Uh, so the first time I took him shopping, right? He came to me. He lives in Jersey. I'm in New York. So he came to me and we went shopping. And usually what I do with guys, the first thing I do is I put clothes on them for size. So I want to make sure they have, you find out what your right size trouser is, what your right size shirt is, and then the right jacket for you. And then I tell them to keep those clothes on while we start looking around for what you're actually going to select. So when we put the clothes on him, himself, he never seen himself looking that sharp before. And he was in the, he was looking in the mirror for 
I said a good five minutes. Five minutes seems like a short time, but it's a long time to be looking in the mirror in a public place, right? He couldn't stop looking at himself. From there, he started to get better and better. He, he, he gravitated to everything I was saying. He realized just how powerful it was to be sharp. Now, when I talk to him, you know, he goes to the gym. He's like, in his town, he's like a celebrity. People who see him, they want to know who he is. You know, he st- when, he, when I come in, meet, when he meets me now, he comes with shades on. He's just looking like a million bucks. He's looking like he is a celebrity. He's walking taller. He's walking like no one could tell him anything. You know, he's like that. And, and he realizes, wow, I didn't realize what clothes can really do for me, but it has transformed who I am, you know? And I say, now you're getting it. Now you're starting to get what I'm really teaching. It's not the clothes. I'm really teaching you how to be the man that you really want to be and not have any limits, always improving, always getting better at being that man. Because we, I mean, through life, it's just improving. Every day you're supposed to improve or else what's the point, right? Right. Cool. You know, it took me, I'm realizing, it, so, so I, I, I dress like a bum most of the time. I, I work from home. I, you know, I just, I, I you know, I, I dress like I'm going to the gym kind of all the time. Right. But I'm, I'm recalling that a couple years ago, I had a, uh, a former Miss America pageant um, participant Took, took me shopping in Boston mm. and I learned that I was, Oh, I was wearing the wrong size stuff. And mm. so we go into stores. I never would have gone in. And like, I was shocked how much fun I had trying on like good looking clothes and seeing myself in mirrors and stuff. And it was, right. it, I, I remember like, yeah, I was, I really got like, you know, a high, a confidence high that mm-hmm. lasted for a while. And right. uh, that it, it really, it really can make a big difference. And, and probably most guys just haven't, they don't think to try that experience. They don't realize right. that or, or, uh, or imagine uh, uh, a common fear or concern might be, you know, well, can I be well dressed without going broke? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and yeah. Are there are there some of your techniques can, can come to uh, for for any any sort of price range or? Yeah. So you know, when I started out, I didn't have the money to you know to to go splurging on suits and things like that. Plus, I didn't need suits. I was, you know, I didn't need to wear suits every day anyway. You know. So what I did was I started with the clothes I already had. And what I learned is, like, the first thing I tell guys is you have to learn what sharp means and what it looks like, right? And that's the first thing you do. And it's all about how the clothes fit on you. So that's the first step. I teach them how to make clothes fit perfectly. And they do that by, and I teach them to start with the clothes they already own. Start with the clothes you already own by going to the tailor. So I teach them what it looks like. Take the clothes you own, go to the tailor, get those things looking sharper. That's the first thing I did. And it was just suit trousers and shirts. Not suit jackets. Suit jackets are expensive. They're also expensive to alter. So not that. I would just be... Hold on one second. What are you doing? It's my son. He's trying to cross the, the path here. So, um, so that's what you would start with. And I call that style distinguished casual. That's the style that I wear every day. That's my jeans and sneakers, right? So it's a, a collared shirt, a suit trouser, and shoes. You can look very sharp with just those pieces. And you can wear that every day and feel comfortable. Uh, then from once you start to feel that, you start slowly adding pieces, you right? And everything that you add to your wardrobe, it must match everything else. Mm-hmm. So when I go shopping, I, I always wear something in the wardrobe that is going to be going to the new wardrobe. So I treat my clothes like family, right? Mm-hmm. Like you say, the shirt is like a family. So when we go on our shopping, we say, oh, we're going to go adopt someone for the family. So I always wear the clothes because if I'm going to get trousers, I want to make sure that the trousers I'm buying fits the shirt that I'm already wearing that's already in my wardrobe because those shirts are similar to the other shirts, right? Same thing with all the other pieces. And I wear these clothes and I get one or two things at a time or I'll budget. I create a whole shopping list, right? A whole shopping list is as if I'm going food shopping and I'll slowly get the pieces that I need throughout the season and I know where to go. I know where this, the, the uh, clothes are. I know how much they're going to cost. So you slowly buy these pieces and I tell guys, what you wear is your, is your marketing. Invest in your image, right? It's not clothes you're buying. You're buying similar to if you were putting a new um, a new theme on your website or you were getting new business cards, right? Or your resume. You want to make sure your resume looks nice and polished and the wording is right and nice paper, right? You want to make sure that your website is modern and it's good for mobile. You want to make sure that your business cards is quality. But what about when people see you, right? When they speak to you, the clothes are covering 90% of your body. The only thing they can see is your hands and your... And your in your face. But when you're walking towards them, all they can see is your body, your image, your shape, and your clothes affect all of those things, right? So that is your marketing, invest in it, because that can be the difference between landing a job, getting the girl, getting the partner, you know, getting that meeting, impressing that person that you only got 30 seconds to talk to, right? 
And that can change your life completely. Your life can completely change if you win that opportunity. Hmm. So that's why, that's why I want my guys to look at their image in a very completely different way. It's not about fashion clothes. It's about who you're projecting as and how the man that you are, the, rep, the reputation and the lasting impression that you're leaving with people is very important. So, so you mentioned defining what sharp means. So is, is that something that, that you tell guys or is it each guy comes up with his own definition of what sharp means to them? So I tell them what sharp is, right? I give them a framework of what sharp is. And that framework is based on classic. That's the reason why I bring up Frank Sinatra. I bring up like James Bond. It's classic. All the James Bond look very similar. They all wore tuxedos. They, they all look very similar, right? Just like in those days, I told you, that I started out with Godfather. Godfather was a movie, it was based in like the 40s, right? It was, it was shot in the 60s, but it was based in the 40s. But yet, I'm impressed with that. A kid who's born and raised in Brooklyn, New York, you know, and I came up in the 90s. Why am I impressed by something from that era? Because it's classic. And that's what I teach guys to be classic. You, when you dress sharp in a classic way, you never go out of style. You impress everyone from kids to old people to people in every country is extremely universal. So if you, if I tell you, your shoes are gonna cost you $300, you take care of them, they'll last you six, seven, eight years. And you can wear them with every suit. And you can wear them and impress every single person from presidents to kids at, at, your, at your kid's school, you're impressed. So that's the reason why I teach them sharp and classic. Now, there are some room for their own style. We definitely do that. They can, they can play with color, they can play with their own, like I wear hats, they can play with accessories. But as far as the foundation, I tell them what sharp means. I, I edu educate them what sharp means. Cool, cool. And we, we talked a lot about uh, career, but you mentioned relationships as well. So have, have you and your clients, are they seeing uh, different reactions, different treatment in, in relationships as well? Oh, of course. I mean, in relationship as far as romantic relationships, but also in just individual relationships. I have, like with my friend, when I first started with him, even his mom, his mom came to me and said, you had a, a great influence on my son, right? I mean, a person who knew him all his life. Uh, when I have uh, clients who don't even, they found my free content and they say, listen, my wife is showing much more uh, admiration for me and appreciation towards me than she's done in a long time just because I'm dressing better. And it's simply a matter of when I teach guys what sharp is, I'm teaching you on a primitive level what sharp is, right? So if for guys, we know what an attractive woman looks like. We can see an attractive woman from uh, 100 yards away and all we can see is her shape and we say, she's attractive. Let me go see how her face looks. Or let me go see how her personality is. But shape alone tells you what attractive is. The same is true for men, right? Our shape is different. It's, it's based on masculine features, big shoulders. That's why we work out. We work our shoulders, big hands, big feet, right? A big chest, a wide back. These things are what make us masculine. This is why suit jackets have padding in the shoulder. Because shoulders close to the face, we communicate with our face, and it shows that we have a strong frame. So it's these little minor details that you want to always emphasize in your clothes because you want to show that you're a masculine man. Even if you don't work out, even if you have rounded shoulders or you're a little overweight, classic menswear has been around for 100 years. It's perfect. That's the reason why we wear the same suits. That we, fit, we figured out how to make ourselves look good at all times. Women, changes for them, right? But us, we figured it out. So if you understand how to do it, perfectly is almost like you being a guy who is who, who can quote uh uh shakespeare you know around certain people that's like wow you can quote shakespeare dressing where we shop around certain people is like wow that's a culture thing right so you as a person people automatically when women see me they automatically want to know who i am you know they openly hit on me right um same for my guys you know they're they're bosses they're like why are you stepping it up they notice they get noticed more right the people who, who are underneath them follow them more. They want to follow their lead because they can see that they're a person of some type of, who's going somewhere, right? So it's one of those things where it's, it's, it connects to so many different things as far as leadership and relationships, but it's a communication thing. You communicate with your appearance, right? right? People see you before they hear you. So that's what I'm also teaching guys, how to communicate. So color comes into play there. You know, all these things, is, it gets so deep that um, it's amazing that we don't really teach this in schools. But uh, it's it's just so powerful. Yeah, because we're we're always being judged, and people are sizing us up and comparing us. But when you take conscious control 
over mm -hmm. what you're putting forward to be judged. You're controlling their judgment, kind of. Exactly. It's like mind control at that yeah. point. <laughs> yeah, awesome. <laughs> Life, mind control, career control, relationship control, club exactly. entry control. Right? Exactly. <laughs> cool. And and you know, I'm reminded of one thing. You know, when, when I the comment about um, can you do this without going broke? Um, and, and you mentioned you know, $300 shoes will will last a lifetime. Like. I remember always thinking suits that were uncomfortable and they were just obnoxious to be in. But when I finally got like a well-fitted suit, I was mm -hmm. like, oh, wow, I can move. I can do anything. This is actually comfortable. So, yeah, right. when again, when you when you do find the quality, it, it does last longer. It is comfortable. Uh, you look better. Right. But, right. Yeah, exactly. But guys, especially guys, can be trapped in that kind of cheap mindset. And I'll just buy, I'll buy the cheapest jeans, the cheapest shoes, and then I got to replace them in six months because they were cheap. And you exactly. think that's like all clothes are like that somehow, but cool. It, it ends up being long. It ends up being more money in the long run, mm -hmm. you know. Plus, it's opportunity cost, right? If you're wearing cheap stuff, I have a, a friend of mine. He's a. Uh, we went to high school together. He's in my Wedges Academy group, and he asked a question about buying H and M suits. And I told him I highly recommend against wearing cheap clothes because you're a man, and if you're wearing a suit, chances are you're going to be around other men in suits, right? Because that day that you're wearing a suit is is for a reason. Right. So you're going to be around men in other suits. And if your suit is low quality, it's going to show. And if you're a guy in a low quality suit, low quality suits are for kids, for people who can't afford. Like if you're a high school kid, yes, you get a low quality suit. If it's your first suit out of college, you may get a low quality suit. If you're not wearing it, yes. But if you're a man and you're about business and you're, you have some type of status, you should never wear cheap clothes because they paint your body. They're basically the thing, they're part of your body when you wear them. They touch your skin, everything. They are part of who you are when you wear them. So you don't want to get cheap clothes because that connects to who you are. Are you cheap, right? If you, you can't be a person who's asking a client to buy this house or to sign up to your program if you're wearing cheap clothes because now you look cheap and that's not what you want to do. You don't want to do that to yourself. So I, I highly recommend if you can't afford a, a, a suit, a, just, just get the suit trousers, the shirt, you know, or save for it because what you wear, when you wear suits, the, the suits that we wear, classic clothes, we only wear them when important things are happening, mm -hmm. right? We wear them to meetings, appointments, uh, business. When we wear someone important, it's, it's for a reason. It's not just like something you wear for no reason. And when you wear it for that reason, chances are, if you're successful that day, your life can change completely. There's opportunity that you're trying to meet that day. So dress for that opportunity. Right. And, and dress like it's already, you know, the... The opportunity's already said yes. You've it's already right. a successful opportunity. Like you're exactly yeah. You're you're on the interview, but you're dressing for your first day on the job. You're you're exactly. beyond that step. Yeah. Right. Cool. Right. So 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 what types of men are are coming to you? Is, is it is it mostly guys in their twenties, or is it is it a range of folks? Who's fine? Uh, it's all guys. Uh, I have some guys who are younger. Right. These are guys. The younger guys will come to me. They're kind of a little bit uh, ahead of the curve. But these guys are more want to be stylish. Right. They want to be stylish, but they want to have more of a sophisticated style. Then you have the guys who are in their late 20s and they're in their careers, right? So they're trying to step it up. They're trying to go to the next level. They're trying to get that promotion or maybe they've gotten the promotion, but they don't feel like they deserve it yet. So they come to me because they want to start on a good foot. Then you have guys who are in their 30s who are like, man, I want to be more mature. I want to look more sophisticated. I want to look more like a classic man. You know, I want to lead my family. I want my kids to look up to me. These types of guys. So I, at one point, I thought it was going to be based on career, but it's not. You know, it's based on the man himself. It's based on what they really want to do, who they really want to be. And, and all of us, we have that. And in different parts of our life, it changes. So when we're younger, we don't care as much. But as you get older, you start wanting a family. You know, you start wanting, you start thinking about your career. You start thinking about the legacy you're leaving behind. And you start thinking about who you are and who people see you as and how you look upon other men. When you're in a place and other men are around, how do you fit in, right? You can have a Maserati outside. You can have, you know, $100 million in your bank account, but no one can tell that. And if you talk about that, you're obnoxious now. <laughs> but if you look like a sharp guy, we just assume this is the guy who has the Maserati. It must be his Maserati, right? That's, and that's what you want because it's a social thing. We all want status and social. It's one of our survival, you know, hierarchies. We all want status because status helps bring other people along it helps people survive it helps people come at, come to our aid as well if we have high status you know so it's, it's all these primal things that are associated with it that that's the re again 
I don't, I don't understand why it's not really taught in schools, but I, I realize that most people just don't know. Even when I go to stores, I can go to a, a men's warehouse and see the mannequin dressed poorly. <laughs> so if the mannequin is dressed poorly, how are they going to dress you sharp, right? If the person who is helping you dress poorly, he can't dress you sharp, right? right? So it's, it's something that's, is little fine details when it comes to this. And a lot of guys, it's kind of, it's kind of been lost in our culture. You know, the, the, the thing that keeps standing out to me is, is you're helping guys have a, a, a new sense of pride, right? In themselves, who they are, what they want to do and how they present themselves to the world. And then that, that, that pride, you know, in the wrong, you know, in, in the wrong twist, it could come off as obnoxious and that guy's a jerk, but it's really come up. It's just that success and you know what you're doing and you're, you're, you're on a mission, you know, that this classic sense that you're, you know, you're strong, you're focused and you know what you want. Exactly. Once you, once you start building your image, you can take control of your image. Taking control of everything else in your life is easier, right? Because it's like, okay, I can take care of all this. I've taken care of myself. I, I know who I am. I know the type of guy I am. If I have a project or a problem, what kind of, what would a shop, how would a shop guy handle this problem? Hmm. You're that shop guy now, so you're going to handle it like a shop guy, right? Or what you think a shop guy is. That's the reason why I have guys, what kind of guy do you want to be? Because the guy you want to be is a guy who takes care of things because that's what men do. Men build Men built the world, right? Everything that we're looking at, this phone was built by years and generations of men discovering resources and how to manipulate metals and how to technology because we came together as men to, to create our environment. The same thing as you, you want to be that man who looks like a guy who can control his environment. And that's the reason why women are attracted to you because they want to be led by a strong man. They want to be protected, but you have to be tested, test proven, right? If you're a sharp guy, it shows you were test proven. It shows that you have some type of status, right? It shows that other people are being led by you. Other men are being led by you. So it's easy for you to lead this family, right? And then you feel that as well. And then you start leading the family. You start leading yourself. You start eliminating laziness in your life, right? And then, and then from doing that for a day, doing it for a week, doing it for a month, in a year, your life is completely different because you've become a different person. Is there one simple tip that, that like the, any man could start putting into action or, uh, you know, something to look at in his own wardrobe or, or what's simple, a simple way for, for a guy to get started to focus on his image? Right. Well, the first thing I tell guys is the mental, the mental thing is you want, you have to care. You have to care about your image. Your image is very important. You never want to leave your house with a poor image because you don't know who's, who you're going to see and you don't know who's going to see you. So always care about that. The second thing is, the biggest problem that guys have is their clothes don't fit them well. Their clothes don't fit them properly. That's the biggest mistake. The same like you said when you went shopping. I was making the same mistakes. Now, I had suits that were designer suits, $1,800 cashmere suits. But they were the wrong. They were one size off. And that just that alone makes them look kind of okay, but not sharp. And that's what we do. We're kind of okay. I didn't realize I was wearing the wrong size shoe for 10 years until I got my first uh, quality pair of shoes, I realized I was wearing a half size too small, hmm. right? And sneakers. And I was like, that's why my toe would hurt after three hours, right? Um, but I didn't realize it, you know? So the first thing you have to realize is you want clothes to fit you well. Now, how does a guy know that? He has to know what good, good fit is. And that's what my free trainings and everything else is all about, is to teach guys what proper size is and simply wearing clothes that fit you. Even if you're wearing hoodies and jeans or whatever, if you wear clothes that fit you, you automatically look more attractive because it frames your body properly. So that's the that's the one tip guys have to know. Wear clothes that fit you well. Beautiful. And, and so what's the best way for people to, to learn more or get in touch with you? Well, they can go to my Well Dressed Academy website, which is just Well Dressed Academy, Dress ED, right? Um, they can go to my, they can look me up on Facebook. You know, they can friend request me. Uh, they can go to my Well Dressed Academy Facebook group where I, I shoot tips in there. I'm also building a Wearages Academy uh, membership site where it's going to all my videos and tips and trainings and all that stuff is going to be in there. That's going to be released next month. So just, you know, follow me and you'll find that. Um, all that stuff is there. My, my goal is to uplift men, right? So when I first started out, I was just in sharp. I was the only sharp guy. I didn't want to be the only sharp guy. I want a guy. I want guys around me to be sharp too. That's why I teach. You know, that's why I teach this stuff because I learned it step by step process. So my goal is to make sharp guys because I really, really, truly believe that 
sharp guys will change the world because their performance will increase. We, will, we won't try to be average. We'll try to be above average. And trying to be above average will allow us to increase our performance. Beautiful. I love it. So, so you mentioned that the, uh, the membership group is coming. Is, is there anything else? What's, what's down the horizon for the Well-Dressed Academy? Well, um, I'm doing a lot of live uh, workshops, live seminars here in New York City. Um, I used to do that in the past, but now I'm, I'm going to be doing a lot more of that. For career guys, you know, the lawyers, the lawyer, the, uh, the real estate agents, the, you know, the doctors, the, the finance brokers, these guys, because um, you're, you're, like I said, your appearance is communicating. So I feel like I'm teaching a new language by teaching guys how to be sharp. So I'm going out and doing a lot more workshops. Um, like I said, we have the membership site, which is going to be phenomenal because it allows anyone just come in at their own time and just find these things or ask me, hey, what about this? One of my clients, the guy I told you about who, who really got into it, he's like, what about dancing? Ty, I need to learn how to dance. A sharp guy should learn how to dance. And I was like, I didn't even think of that. So in the Words Academy membership, I'm going to have other experts to come in and talk about things like I'm going to have a chef that comes in and teach guys how to make a good meal, like a first date type of meal or, for, you know, the first time you invite your lady over type of meal. You know, a meal for, you know, you cook it for your family because you want to be or how to barbecue, right? As a man, right? I'm going to bring in other guys to teach you how to cultivate a brotherhood, right? You need to have other guys that's helping you sharpen yourself up. How do you cultivate that? You know, how to be a good friend, how to be a good father, all these things that men need to learn, these informal skills that guys learn through challenge, but they don't necessarily share with other guys. They share with their sons and maybe their daughters, but they don't share with other guys. And we need to learn this. Like, right. So I learned an informal skill of dressing very sharp and I, I rarely see guys sharper than me, rarely. And we need to change that. We need more sharp guys. Cool. Well, uh, you're the man to do it. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> I'm see, next time in New York City, I'm going to see that the army of sharp guys, I'll know where they're coming from. Exactly. Exactly. Awesome. Well, I, uh, yeah, I learned a lot. I hope everyone listening learned a lot. And uh, we'll, we'll have all sorts of the links to, to the welldressacademy.com and find you on social media. Um, I, I want to thank you for your time, Ty, and, and fitting in your, your busy park day schedule. <laughs> um, it, it's been a pleasure. I wish you uh, continued success. And you'd, again, I just, uh, your enthusiasm, the pride, that classic sense, it's, it's just, it's just beaming from you. And uh, it, yeah, it, it's, it's much needed. And it, it's a great, it, it's interesting. That it's a, it, it's like a, you know, it, it's a brush of fresh air, but it's also like, Old air. Old air. <laughs> so you're bringing the best of the old air back. Right. right. <laughs> awesome. Um, so thanks for your time. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Wherever you're finding Real Men Feel, give us a, a like, a share, a comment. Love to hear from you. And uh, be good to yourself. And be well dressed to yourself. <laughs> exactly. Thank you, Andy, for the opportunity. I appreciate it. Great. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you for listening to Real Men Feel. Reach out to us at realmenfeel at gmail.com. Learn more about Andy Grant at theandygrant.com. Until next time, visit realmenfeel.org or the Real Men Feel Facebook group and share what you thought of this episode. Please give this podcast a review on iTunes, Google Play, or wherever you are discovering Real Men Feel. Visit goodmenproject.com for more of the conversations no one else is having.